Well, friends, this has been the lintiest Lent that I have ever linted. I don't know if you feel that way, but I am so thankful that it's almost done. Easter is almost here, which means that we'll be able to move from the hard introspection of the cross to the joyful celebration of the gospel truth of resurrection. Two years ago, I had mentioned to some colleagues that I wasn't ready for Easter to arrive, that I was actually longing for more time for the church and for myself to sit in the ashes of repentance just a little bit longer. It's amazing what two years can do because right now all I want is for this time of introspection, this time of ashes, this time of Lent to be over. But it's not over yet, is it? No, today is Good Friday, the darkest day of this dark season. We're not through with Lent. In fact, we're in the absolute thick of it. And on top of that, our world seems to be engaged in an extended time of Lent as well, as we sit in inside and in isolation and wait. Waiting not on the cross of Christ and the coming resurrection, but on the end of a pandemic that has shut down so much of our community, our country, our world. On top of that, earlier this week we heard from the Office of the President of the United States and from officials at the Center for Disease Control that this is most likely going to be the deadliest week for the U.S. Friends, we are in the thick of a season of Lent that does not seem to want to end. Now, uh, here is where I break a rule that a pastor much older and much, much wiser than me instilled within me long ago. You see, there's an understanding among clergy that to get the most out of Holy Week, you never do anything that skips to the end. You wave the palms and sing the hosannas on Palm Sunday. You partake of the bread and juice that is so much more than bread and juice. And you hear Christ's command to love by serving on Maundy Thursday. You sit at the foot of the cross and take the time that is necessary to feel the weight of its pain, its sorrow, its grip on us, that grip of death on Good Friday. Even though we know what is coming, it is important to walk through everything that leads up to that moment when, early in the morning, the women will walk dutifully to the tomb. And you know what? I agree, it is extremely important to sit in the ashes of Lent before moving to the glory of Easter. But... If I'm being honest with y'all, I think that just this once, we've already done enough of that this season, and most likely we'll be forced to do even more of it before everything is said and done. So please forgive me those saints living and dead that make up my cloud of witnesses. Please forgive me those mentors who have come before me and have shown me the robes and taught me the rules because I need to break one today. I am certain that what we need right now more than anything is the reminder that it might be Friday, but brothers and sisters, Sunday is coming. In no time at all, the church will move from Golgotha, the place of the skull, to the empty tomb. In no time at all, we will go from hearing the cries of Christ to hearing the angel proclaim emphatically, Christ is not here. And we will be sent into the world, unleashed into the world, to share this good news with all who will listen. We might be in the thick of Lent right now, but the joy of Easter is always present with us, and our world desperately needs an encounter with an extra helping of that joy. So may we break the rules. May we share the good news with all we encounter. And may we hold tight to the gospel truth 
on this good Friday that yes, it is Friday, but Sunday, Easter is coming. Amen.